let me now uh, describe the uh, process of tadpole removal. Um, first, define shifted field. I x is given by phi shifted plus alpha, some constant. Then you write the Lagrangian density, and the old Lagrangian, the original uh, Lagrangian density, which is given by minus half del mu phi, del mu phi minus half m square phi square plus g by factorial three phi cube in terms of phi s. So the kinetic, the derivative term remains the same because the, it's a shift by a constant. Uh, this phi, is, phi square will be replaced by phi s plus alpha whole square plus g by factorial three phi s plus alpha whole cube. Now, if you expand these binomials, uh, then you will get uh, phi a square term. Uh, in addition to that, you will have a linear in phi s term and then a constant alpha square. Uh, so, so basically you will have, uh, you start from this phi square, but here you're going to have a quadratic term, a linear term and a constant term. Here you will have uh, a cubic term a quadratic term, a linear term, and a constant term. So cubic terms and quadrat uh, so cubic term remains the same uh, because it's a, it's it starts with phi s cube. So cubic term will be exactly the same with the same coupling. But what it means is that you will have a quadratic piece from here and a quadratic piece from here. So uh, that will change the coefficient m square because there is a contribution coming from, from this binomial expansion. Uh, uh, that's quadratic in phi s. And then both these two terms ha will have a linear in phi s term. That's a new form, uh, a new type of term in the, uh, in the Lagrangian. So what one can do is to write um, this uh, same Lagrangian in terms of the shifted field, but now um, the coefficients, some of the coefficients will change. Uh, so mass square will change. Um, the cubic coupling will remain the same. And there is a new coupling, which is a linear coupling and a constant piece, gamma, okay? So both, all these uh, new parameters that you see, ms, uh, beta and gamma, can be written in terms of m, g, and alpha. These are the uh, three parameters. So m, s, uh, beta, and gamma can be written in terms of m, g, and alpha. So the, this, uh, let us call this as the shifted Lagrangian. Uh, so this is your L shifted of phi shifted plus gamma. Then define uh, Green's function for phi s. Uh, that will be given by Gn s x1 to xn um, that is the vacuum expectation value of time order product of phi s hat x1 to phi s hat xn in terms of path integral that will look like the following. S shifted of 
phi shifted, then phi is x1 to phi is xn divided by integral d phi s, which will be for i by h bar s shifted of phi shifted. So s shifted uh, is a is a action corresponding to this Lagrangian density. And then uh, the total action, if you consider the total action, original action, then you would also have a gamma term, gamma times the volume of space time. Uh, uh, but that will cancel both from upstairs and downstairs so that I have removed. Um, in terms of uh, generating functional, uh, the same will look like of W shifted J, where W shifted J is a generating functional given by e to the power i by h bar is shifted phi shifted j uh, integral d phi is e to the power i by h bar is shifted phi shifted now let's look at the diagrammatics um, of the shifted theory Um, so we have the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, same procedure, no change. You just look at the propagator and all the primitive vertices. So propagators uh, uh, is given by, let me not draw this. Uh, uh, the difference is that now it is, uh, its mass parameter is uh, ms instead of the original mass. Uh, so delta shifted x minus y is equal to h bar integral dq over 2 pi to the power p q dot x minus y divided by q square plus minus q. And the primitive vertices are uh, the three vertex because we have the uh, same cubic, uh, sorry, this is, uh, this should be cubic, cubic vertex and the linear vertex, that's a new thing. So the linear vertex is a new one. So let me, uh, with, a, with, a, with a coupling beta. And we follow the same procedure. We should draw or consider all possible topologically inequivalent diagrams uh, with, with these as the building blocks. So consider all possible topologically inequivalent diagrams the above as building blocks. So this would imply if you calculate the connected, uh, so the generating functional for the connected Green's function, Z shifted, then um, 
just because combining this, uh, this and this, we had whatever diagrams we could get uh, out of this and this only um, would be the same diagrams that we got earlier, uh, which is this. Uh, which we actually, which can be denoted as this, this is a tadpole. So that's the tadpole of the original theory. And now because of this linear, uh, uh, this linear interaction, um, well, it's not in, I mean, it's an interaction in the sense of like the way we deal with the vertices, the so linear vertex, uh, we will have a term uh, which that will produce a term linear in J and that will look like this. This is linear vertex. Then we have uh, all the other uh, terms. Like two point functions. And so on. Now, all the terms, all the uh, diagrams that we had talked about them uh, all the diagrams, uh, all these diagrams that are present in absence of tadpole will be corrected, will receive corrections due to tadpole. For example, this diagram will receive a correction uh, due to tadpole in the original theory. Um, now, they will uh, not only receive corrections from the tadpole, but they will also receive correction from this linear vertex. And uh, so there are two types of corrections. Uh, and uh, we have to, you have to see how, um, uh, and we have to add all those terms, all those corrections. But, but one way to de simplify the problem, uh, if you look at this, that the, the argument that said that every diagram will be in the original theory will receive a correction like this. Uh, it basically did not look, we did not have to look into the, uh, what kind of diagrams are inside uh, this blob, right? Because this, if this blob exists, then there will be a term like that. There will be a diagram like that. That's a tadpole correction. And therefore, uh, now we could think of this entire thing to be a shifted tadpole. Where I have added this term as well. We just put that inside the bracket and call it a shifted tadpole. Now, if this, if this is a shifted tadpole, then in this theory, just by the same argument, all the diagrams will be corrected by the shifted tadpoles, right? Now, what we should do is to demand that this is zero. This is precisely what we are trying to achieve because uh, this is the vacuum correction. I mean, the quantum correction, uh, uh, this, this represents uh, the shift of the vacuum and we are giving a counter shift. Uh, by this linear term in the action. Because of the shifting, uh, the, the linear term was produced in the action. So you choose beta in such a way, uh, this beta has to be chosen in such a way that it cancels because beta is a free parameter. We, this beta is related to uh, the original parameter alpha in a certain way. So alpha is a free parameter. We, have, we haven't specified what that alpha should be, what that shifting should be. But what about the linear coupling uh, it, it, it generates? Uh, you choose the linear coupling in such a way uh, that it cancels the entire contribution original uh, tadpole of the original theory. Once this is done, done then uh, if this is uh, demanded, then all um, you know, tadpole corrected diagrams uh, in this theory, in the original theory, will up, uh, in this theory will be will will go to zero, and therefore the diagrammatics will look exactly same as the um, uh, as if there is no tadpole. So basically, the statement is that.
all tactful corrected diagrams in the original theory appear here with the original that pool replaced by shifted that pool. Since latter is set to zero by tuning alpha, all such corrections vanish in the shifted theory. Okay.